Depending on your age, it can be easy to overlook just how much the Jackass franchise has influenced American pop culture. From its first airing on MTV in October 2000, this merry band of misfits and their crude crass and downright dangerous comedy would inspire generations of thrill-seekers and viral videos, and go on to dominate several entertainment mediums. This included TV spin-offs, specials, bonus content, even a video game. Not to mention launching the film careers of several of the cast, some more successful than others. Where is the money? Close. How close? In my pocket. While each of the crew brought a unique influence to the series, there was one who always pushed it to new heights. Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> On top of being the most prolific face of the series since its inception, Knoxville also headlined the only narrative feature of the brand, Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa in 2013. The movie showed that Jackass stunts and pranks could be incorporated naturally into a loose narrative, inspiring other films like Bad Trip last year. But through all the Jackass spin-offs, specials, and sequels, there was one project in particular that I feel is almost forgotten, which is odd because it only came out about four years ago. Action Point. While it's not officially connected to the Jackass brand, the influence is clearly there. Aside from having two members of the Jackass crew in its cast, it was also released by the same studio as the Jackass movies, Paramount. The movie also contains that same brand of crazy stunts, only this time there are no hidden cameras. The real stunts are part of the story. And this is an element that I feel deserves praise. It truly harkens back to the era of silent films, when real stunts were an integral part of the story. Now, that's not to say this movie is without its flaws, but I still feel that the good parts are worth discussing, particularly because of how badly this movie failed, whereas the Jackass movies have been enormous hits. So why did an audience that always shows up for the Jackass movies fail to do so for this one? Well, let's take a look back at what went wrong with this failed cousin of Jackass. Action point. Ah, shit. Damn it! First off, let's talk about the inspiration for Action Point, a now defunct theme park known as Action Park. If you're watching this video, you've most likely seen or at least are familiar with some of the theme park YouTube community, a lot of whom have done amazing work chronicling the rise and fall of this New Jersey theme park, a dangerous, lawless oasis called Action Park. Action Park has brought you the greatest adventures on Earth. Action Park has done it. I can't believe we're doing this! Oh my god! Again. The human slingshot. It's a subject matter that eventually got its own documentary feature, Class Action Park on HBO Max, which I highly recommend if you want the full story. Prior to this, though, if you hadn't grown up visiting Action Park, you probably had no knowledge of its existence. Then, in 2013, a short film titled The Most Insane Amusement Park Ever was released, briefly chronicling the park's history. It brought widespread attention to the craziness that was Action Park. It's like coming to Broadway, it's wonderful! Johnny Knoxville came across this short film and saw the potential in adapting it to a feature film. The owner was like, I'm not going to hassle the kids with a bunch of rules, I'm just going to leave safety up to them. It was like Lord of the Flies with booze and weed. In working out the story for the movie, Knoxville, along with the help of Mike Judge and other writers, decided to create an original theme park inspired but not based on Action Park. If you're familiar with the real Action Park, you know there is far more tragedy than comedy in its story, as overall safety negligence resulted in countless injuries and the deaths of six people, several of whom were children. In playing that negligence for laughs, the writers made the smart choice in keeping the lure of Action Park intact, but changing the world and people around it, with Action Point feeling more like the world of Caddyshack than of the real park. Get down from there, you little bastard! <laughs> Walk it off! As with the classic snobs versus slobs comedies of the 1980s, there's a rival theme park taking away Action Point's customers, Seven Parks. We'll let Seven Parks be about what you can't do. Action Point is going to be about what you can do. Yeah! Yeah! The movie reimagines Action Park in Calico Ridge, Ohio, instead of Vernon, New Jersey. Though in actuality, the movie was filmed in Cape Town, South Africa, which definitely gives the movie a unique look. Another change comes in the form of the park's owner, 
Instead of basing the lead character on Gene Mulville, the controversial tycoon that founded Action Park, the movie reimagines the theme park's founder as a good-hearted, down-on-his-luck simpleton named DC Carver, played by Johnny Knoxville. DC seems to genuinely care about the park and the well-being of its guests. Well, kind of. Also, unlike Gene, DC lives on the park's grounds, in what used to be a western saloon attraction. His roommate, close friend Benny, is played by Jackass's Chris Pontius. Having never really seen Pontius outside of playing himself in Wild Boys and Jackass, I have to say that he's a pretty fun addition to this story. He totally feels like the type of guy you would have seen working at a rundown amusement park in the 80s. Yeah, I'm looking to buy a Merkin, it's one of them wigs for your vagina. I kinda wish a few more of the Jackass crew had been in the cast though, as the stunts mostly fall to Knoxville and Pontius. And while they're pretty impressive, with Knoxville himself receiving more injuries than he ever had in a Jackass movie here. You got injured how many times making this movie? Uh, more than I have on any other film. I don't have a number, but I, it was just like four concussions and... One of the reasons the stunts in the Jackass movies are so memorable and funny is because of the real-life camaraderie going on just off-screen. The comedy is enhanced in the actual reactions of the cast and crew. That's something that's really missing here. With that element removed, you just end up feeling bad for DC rather than wanting to laugh at him. And watching this, you realize that you kinda need those reaction shots to balance out the action. Director Tim Kirkby is an experienced comedy director, but I feel like this movie would have benefited from having Jackass director Jeff Tremaine involved, as he's a guy that clearly knows how to frame stunts for their maximum comedy potential. I mean, it's telling that Knoxville received a lot of injuries on this film, Honestly, the bloopers that play during the end credits provide more laughs than some of the gags in the movie. And watching this stuff, you just realize how helpful these type of reactions can be for pacing, but they're not essential. For example, let's take a look at some stunts from the silent era that I mentioned earlier. Buster Keaton performed near-death-defying stunts, but his character always got up, shook it off, and continued on his way. In showing the audience that he wasn't gravely injured, they were able to laugh, and we still are to this day. Here, when Knoxville is seen writhing around the ground in pain, we know that it's real, and without those natural reaction shots to draw out the humor, you just end up feeling bad for him, and it undercuts the comedy. In a narrative comedy like this, we need to see this character get up and shake it off, playing off his injuries in a Three Stooges-like fashion. Knoxville stunts are nothing short of amazing here, though. I also love the parts of this movie that recreate the real attractions that were a part of Action Park. Again, the story reminds me of those 80s comedies showcasing these lovable misfits. There's nobody facing the water in case someone needs help. Ah, let God sort them out. <laughs> I really like the supporting cast made up of the young Action Point employees as well as the addition of DC's daughter into the story. It gives his character motivation and purpose, and showcases what a good actor Knoxville can be. I guess the shit birds in the park, they became my family. And I didn't want to lose them like I lost you. A lot of people take for granted how great he is in Bad Grandpa, not just in the comedy, but in the dramatic narrative sequences as well. And speaking of Bad Grandpa, one of the worst elements of this movie is the flash-forward segments featuring a present-day DC recounting the events to his granddaughter. Your mom ever tell you it's your old papa home on the greatest amusement parks of all time? She didn't. These scenes just feel really out of place and serve no real purpose. There's jokes like this which just feel like it would have been a hidden camera gag from Bad Grandpa, but it's played straight in a narrative format and it just doesn't work. There'd be more claims and lawsuits and jackhole attorneys coming around. So what'd you do? No! Ah! I can't be sure, but I have a feeling that these scenes may have been mandated by a studio executive trying to tap into the success of Bad Grandpa, as this stuff was a heavy part of the marketing as well. 
I mean, either that or they were reshoots needed to pad out the barely hour runtime. Seriously, the credits roll at just an hour and 16 minutes, with the old man Knoxville stuff taking up about 16 minutes itself. That's my damn legacy. These scenes, along with throwing off the pacing, also ruin any chance of natural exposition because there's an accompanying voiceover into the story. I knew I had to come up with a big idea. An idea that would catch fire and help us compete with those corporate douchebags. But, whew, it wasn't easy. It's cliched and simple, but there's a reason people always say show and don't tell when talking about filmmaking. Here, all the character development just gets told to us by a voiceover. As I was lying on my back on the verge of a seizure, something happened. It was a damned epiphany. Between this and other bizarre marketing choices, you can see how Paramount was vying hard to sell this movie to Jackass fans, instead of allowing it to be its own thing, which I think actually hurt the movie in the long run. It's not an attraction, it's a stunt we can charge admission for, we're gonna make a bundle. Let's see what this baby can do. There needed to be a balance between the narrative stuff and the more Jackass-inspired stunts, but the movie doesn't really know where to draw the line between the two. The Jackass movies are known for their lightning-fast pacing, non-stop laughs, gross-out gags, and the real-life camaraderie of the cast and crew, something that can't really be replicated in a narrative feature. I guess audiences just realized this, as Action Point opened at number 8, grossing only $5 million of its $45 million budget. How much time do we got? Ten business days. We're gonna have to make a real push here, I mean... Paramount continued to mismarket the movie post its theatrical run, replacing the fun 80s-inspired poster art with the more Jackass-inspired one for its Blu-ray release. They even packaged this movie with Bad Grandpa to try to boost sales. The movie is less about stunts and pranks, and more about an era when a theme park like Action Point could actually exist. Johnny Knoxville, as always, is just great. I didn't build this place for you or the bank. I built it for the kids. So, I'm not selling to any of you fanny blowers. Like Bad Grandpa, I feel he excels when he can mix physical comedy with a level of dramatic performance. And while Action Point definitely gives him that chance, it can never seem to find the right balance for both. This place should be closed down! Still, I would love to see this type of comedy tried again. As I said in the intro, it has my respect mainly because it tried something new. Stunt performance, especially as it pertains to comedy, is just a lost art form. And I'm grateful for any project that fights to keep it alive. If you're looking for any movie that does this concept right, well, there's really only one man that did it flawlessly. But that's a topic for another video.